Have you guys ever accidentally found a coin show and you weren't really ready for it? Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and today a uh, quick little video about a coin show that I stumbled across when I was with my family out on vacation and uh, just had family time, but I found a coin show accidentally and I decided to go. I didn't have my money with me. I didn't really have uh, my want lists or my checkbook or any of that stuff that I normally shop for. So instead of really doing anything businessy, I, I just enjoyed the, the moment and I want to share for you a couple of different things. I did buy a couple things and also I want to promote uh, a young gal who was set up with her father who started her own business. Uh, before I get to that, I do want to mention to you, uh, I know some of you have kind of commented on maybe the lack of open boxes and some of you uh, maybe have said, well, thank God Ben stopped sending the money, right? So the weird thing is, you know, we send in on a very regular basis, just, you know, packages to PCGS or NGC. And I can promise you that the delay is not on our side. NGC is literally taking five weeks to enter the packages right now, to enter them into their system even. So I have to wait five weeks to find out that they got my package. Now I know they got my package because of tracking and stuff, but they're not putting it in their system for that long and then you're waiting. So currently I can tell you both companies are backed up still and again, both companies are going through transitions and uh, Hopefully we'll get some more open box stuff for you pretty soon. Okay, so without further ado, let me show you a few couple, a few couple of things. Let's look at some stuff, shall we? First things first, uh, there'll be a link down in the show notes for this young gal who's making these t-shirts and uh, you can support her. I know this is kind of ironic because some of you have said, you know, Ben, when are you gonna put some swag out? And I haven't yet. Um, so she's got shirts and coffee cups and uh, some accessory pouches that have her different content on them. One is a simple I love coins, I heart coins. One is the I've got gas uh, gold acquisition syndrome. So she's got that in the coffee cup. But uh, just one more coin, I promise. But her, her hottest seller, which I think is, is uh, <laughs> I have too many coins said no one ever, right? Well, not, not that one. That's not actually the one that I was thinking of, but that's a fun one. That's a fun shirt, but the one that's her number one seller is, uh, of course, Numismatist, uh, which is a crazy person who pays money uh, for other pieces of money. So everyone go get a Numismatist shirt today and support her. There'll be a link down in the show notes. Uh, and without further ado, I want to show you something that I did pick up at the coin show. The show, by the way, I was in Phoenix area. I was in Fountain Hills. And I picked up something that I had never seen before. I haven't seen this note. Uh, this is a colonial piece. The president, directors, and company of the Bank of North America promised to pay the bearer on demand 1 90th of a dollar, August 6, 1789. Tench Francis, cashier, uh, one penny specie. So it's really a cool note because it is uh, 1 90th of a dollar. 1 90th of a dollar and it is also one pence, right? And this is the X Eric P. Newman collection. So the Eric P. Newman collection, for those of you who don't know, this colonial book is by Eric P. Newman. And he also donated a ton of money to um, the ANA to make a museum. And I believe that that would be in Colorado Springs. And this note has a whole lot more history to it uh, than that. I mean, first of all, the fact that Eric uh, Newman owned it is really cool. The designs are fantastic. I love just looking at these guys up close, you know, how the ink goes and flows on these. But uh, one of the things that's really cool is right here, this part where it says that it is printed by B.F. Bach of Philadelphia. Now, that is actually Ben Franklin's grandson, Ben Franklin Bach. Uh, and so he printed this and they actually know the source of the paper. And I've done videos in the past about colonials. I think I've mentioned this to you guys. Maybe I haven't, maybe I'm just getting all my wires crossed, but there's a, there's a the note that's printed by Ben Franklin that has this fancy artificial coloring on it, <laughs> artificial toning, this really cool color on it. And actually these sheets were printed for these notes with the edge sheets all having that on it. So if you can get one with that on it, it's, it's probably worth a whole lot more. Uh, and so it, it's really a neat piece of American history. Ben Franklin himself purchased this paper and brought it back from uh, France, 
I want to say it was from Francois that he brought that back. And overall, just a great, great piece of history. And uh, I'm super excited about this note, uh, just because it's a, it's a, it's got great eye appeal to it. It's got uh, pedigree to it. It's a note I've never owned before. And so everything about this note is really cool. So also something that we've talked about before is that there was a coin shortage recently, and we've talked about coin shortages in the past from the Civil War era. Also during the colonial, colonial period, these notes were really printed because of uh, species shortages, of coin shortages. So if you know anything about colonial currency and colonial America, they took anything made out of metal sometimes, right? So, but the paper money was spreading. It was spreading. Also, I, I picked up something that, you know, surprise, surprise, you know, some books, but check these out. The Numismatist, um, founded in 1891, January, 1950. I kept it in the original twine because, you know, it was, it was cool looking, right? Of course, now that I pull on the twine, you're probably thinking there's no way he's going to get this untied and you'd be right. No, look at that. I got it. So what's cool is this is a entire year. And the guy who was selling these, oh, look at that, the, the front cover is really faded, but this other one's nice and clean. Oh, look at this. The farther down the stack you go, the cleaner they get. It's hard to tell the color. These are kind of a green color. But a uh, little bit smell of, you know, typical mold and stuff. So, but this was an entire year of numismatist magazines from the ANA from 1950, and he wanted 20 bucks for it. Oh, here's a section on new and recent issues. Uh, right, there's advertising. So what's cool about this type of stuff is uh, the advertising really gives you an idea of both the products that were available, right, what type of holders were available, uh, you know, how things were priced back then. Uh, so if you really want a piece of history, older books are fun. There's a coin cabinet, look how cool that is, right, and then you put your two by twos all through there. For people who um, do a lot of research and try to put together stories and books and timelines, this is something that you would you would use, right? You go through and you would understand exactly what type of products were available. But if you want to understand the name of different coin companies and where they were uh, at different times, and it, it's really just a wealth of information. Oh, look at this. We got... Uh, Colonial New Jersey story right up front. I'm going to have to check that out. And so now you know, if you didn't know, stamps. How did that get in there? Cool. Cool, cool. So anyways, I'm going to have fun with these. Uh, oh, look at that. The Booker T. Washington Memorial Half Dollars. Only 12,000 sets. Avoid disappointment. Price postpaid $8.50 per set. Maybe everyone was having the same problem back then as they uh, are today. Oh, look at this, the Panama Pacific set, all five coins, brilliant uncirculated, um, $1,185, dude, get out your time machine, where's your DeLorean, BB stamp and coin, yeah, he was a big dealer, BB stamp and coin, all right, guys, anyways, that's fun stuff that I randomly picked up at a coin show, Fountain Hills Coin Show in Phoenix, when I didn't expect there to be a coin show. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on more buttons in the corner and watch more videos and all that good stuff. Thanks.